And welcome guys to another nice little video. Now today we are going to do our upgrade system. Now, the way we do it is with scriptable objects and whatnot. The scriptable object itself, and this is the second pulse wave of updates for this kind this system. If you do not know how the upgrade system works, please go watch the other videos for the upgrades. And I believe we have one. There should be another one on the channel. So if anything, if you can't find one, then just um, when I'm going through the code and everything else, just Pause the video if it's a little too quick for you and copy the code. That way, you know. And if you don't know it, in Windows 10, on the top bar, like, let's say in Unity, you know how you got these little tabs right here? If you take this tab, but it's actually the bar itself, on the very top, and put it to the edge of the screen it will frame it there for your code and then just do the other side on that I'll probably do a video on it or whatnot and if um, I remember I'll put a link below the description to show you guys how to do that so that you guys will know how to you know pause the video and be able to copy it all down but in any case, let's get into this. So when we get to our towers and everything, let's get off this one because this is an older one. And is this one of our new ones? Yes. Okay. So in our scripts that we have right now, we use a scriptable object, which is a cost object, to do a lot of our other stuff. It comes with an upgrade, the cost, the icon. The upgrade details, you know, the words that they have, you know, and then an update key. Update key is for unlocking the the next turn. Okay. Now in this turn script right here, we just use it as a variable. The reason why I do this is because this is a reference. It isn't instantiated multiple times like the rest of this stuff. So it'll leave less of a footprint in your system. And we use object pooling, but we use a game object as our key. Now, if you don't know this, when you're doing asset bundles like this, okay, our bullet is a reference with the game object, okay? We use the reference here. Alright. If you put this bullet, like let's say in the asset bundle, like here, and then build it, this will break that prefab that you have as a variable. If you drag something in there, like, you know, let's say this, alright, or drag the bullet in there, for instance, okay? Well, what happens is when this is instantiated, and everything it'll break this right here okay it'll break it like right off the bat now even though this turn isn't in the asset bundle this bullet is so I guess unity probably just bundles it all together and doesn't make it allow to be like a reference so it like breaks your references and I just want you to be aware. Now, you may see this enum right here and everything. It's for the next wave of updates for the turret system to upgrade certain aspects of it. Better firing rate and things like that. It's part of a next wave of upgrading. So, this is kind of the first thing. Now, if you want to know about the cost object and everything, the cost object script is very simple. If we haven't went through it, we will go through it right now. 
because it's that simple. We have cost ob cost amounts. It's a scriptable object. Okay. And we don't need this crap. Boom. We just need the engine. Okay. Actually, I don't... Yeah, we need engine because we're using game objects. Okay, we just got simple variables, sprite, game objects, stuff like that. We have a get research cost. Okay, which I don't know if we're using this. The sell amount. And then a public has enough. If you have enough money, then it'll let you sell stuff. And then we got the upgrade, the spawn upgrade, which it passes a build object. Where did that come from? Where do we call that from? Oh, 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 yeah. It, it comes from this script. Now, this is a very big script and everything, and it should be. Are we using it? We need the unity. We don't need this crap. Okay. So here's the thing. This is another like manager state thingy. So it's another panel object. So if you look at the first video, tower defense, and it says UI in curly braces, then you'll know what this is. That video explains it extensively, so make sure you, you know, watch it because it'll tell you stuff, right? And this is mostly a bunch of refer. These are pretty much just reference stuff, okay? Icon stuff like that. Because in the panel, I use an icon, I use text and stuff like that in the Unity engine. And what it looks like is. over here and we go into our canvas upgrade it's a it's a simple script right here okay and we set our references ignore these because this is just more test code okay we have a this is a regular game object just nothing special then we have this object which should be showing something right now. Oh, oh, the image is gone. That's why. Um, why is it not showing anything? Really? Do I? Oh, yeah, I got layers. Okay, there we go. It gets annoying. So I like, you know, take it off here. I've got an icon, and we reference that in the script. If you don't use that stuff, then you can cut off the functionality and like drill it down. If you just wanted text or something like that, just take the image stuff out and just work with that. Very simple to do. Okay, and just a simple panel, nothing special. Simple text, simple image, and then two buttons. What these buttons do? is they call upgrade dot upgrade button. It's a function in our upgrade thing. That's all it does. Upgrade button and then sell button. Okay, they're they're pretty much just buy upgrade, you know, pretty simple. You just drag in the upgrade script and there you go. Like so. And this is the buy button and we go upgrade button. There. Bam. Done. Hooked up. Now, I was going to do something else and everything, like two images and stuff, but then I got to make another script and all this other... No, no. I just hooked it up into a button because we're not going to use these buttons too much. And two, this doesn't ever change. It's always the same. So, the Unity button system right here will work just fine. It'll work just fine. And that's the, the panel stuff. I mean, it's just that simple. Anchor where you want. I mean, that stuff. So, 
let's go into the code itself. So we got the cost amount, upgrade, it calls this stuff, and then we sell. And that's pretty much it. I mean, it's really, it's about as simple as it gets. No lie. Now in our upgrade system right here that does all the upgrading, we used to have a string and stuff like that. This is all gone. This is gone. This isn't needed right now, so we can exit out of that. This is a function that doesn't need to exist. Um, upgrade loop. No, we don't need that. Okay. We have the start function here, which goes upgrade system, which is a static reference to ourself, to this script equals this and then we go upgrade data dot set text and icon all this does is in our static class that we have right here we set the image and the text and text and then image I did it backwards and these are all static and everything. This class should actually be static. Yes, there we go. There we go. Now, we have a list of strings for one specific reason. Because we have to do a lookup when we do the upgrade button. Okay? When that button is clicked, it checks this the, the data in the list. Close panel just does the close thing. We don't do this kind of stuff in this script no more, so we're going to start deleting this stuff. Deleting this stuff, and there we go. Okay. Upgrade button calls the data upgrade button action. Okay. We don't do this in here. We don't do this. We don't do this, this, and as you can see, I cut out a lot of code and different stuff out of this class right here, and for good reason. When we do this and everything, we're going to be doing a lot of working with multiple levels and stuff. So there's a lot of information that we need. And a mono behavior like this isn't going to work for us. So we use the data class. Okay? So we got array cast hit, our on update, which never gets executed unless we have this script here. Because the update method actually gets called from a mono behavior. So think of this class as a container class, okay? We do the input, get stuff, make sure the thing, the ray to screen, physics, boom, boom, boom. We check game stuff, upgrade. And I don't think I've talked to this about this yet is game layers. Game layer is another script that I've set up that is a static class as well and it's got constants so like the layer the towers are all supposed to be in and stuff I put in layer 8 build layer 9 this these like when we talk about layers and everything they have a specific integer for each layer which 32 layers in general okay so what I've done is do these constants to Hey, guess what? The enemies are always going to be in zero placement planes if we use that, which I think I'm going to use this for the 2D version of this, which I'm thinking about doing instead of just the 3D. And we can use these integers to filter out a lot of other stuff. Like, hey, let's say I hit a tower. Well, the tower is in 8, so the logic that I'll use is from 8 very simple to work with very easy so 
just a basic ray. We hit, we hit this layer. Boom, do this. Call get upgrade, which upgrade is a variable for the cost object. To upgrade dot get upgrade. This is the build object that we've got here. If we get component build object. The variable we call get. Okay. Which in turn does get upgrade. Which by default this is returned null. Okay. Because this is the build object. But since we're using inheritance, we overwrite that in the tower code. Okay. And where is one of those prefabs for it? Tower. Tower code. And we edit. Where is my edit? Okay. All right, so don't pay attention to that stuff. That stuff. That's oh, this is the second version of it. That's bad. So where's the first version? Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, and we're gonna be going through a lot of this. Get enemy. Tag, 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 tag. Wow, wait a minute. Huh? Oh. What the sh Nikes? It's in a function. Oh, oh, here it is. Cost object. Cost. So we do to upgrade dot get up. Oh, 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 yeah, 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 that's right. Upgrade equals to upgrade, which is set from here, right? And then get upgrade. All right. So where's our variable for get upgrade? This is that. This is update, which we don't need. This this crap here this crap here enable destroyed ah here we go get upgrade returns the cost and then it in turns gets does it call something else no no it just gets that object okay yeah yeah the upgrade if it's not null, if it if it's not null, then we call receiver, and then we call the static reference, open the panel, which is in our class here. Okay, just opens the child panel, and let's go. So very easy. And then if la di da, we're over a panel. If we have the the panel open. What this function does is close the panel. When we push the button, when we push fire, well, you know, mouse one or mouse two, it's one of them. It's the thing you use to shoot bullets in first person shooters. There you go. And here's upgrade button actions, which is pretty easy, but we need to see receiver. Okay. This is privately owned by the static class. If upgrade is null, then we do this stuff. If upgrade, if we have the key in our list up the top, it will go, hey, we've got the key, so it returns. I believe true, right? Ah, yeah, it turns our upgrade button on. And then if we don't have that key, it returns it false. So basically, we're just turning the button on and off for our upgrade. And then we always set the text and icon. Okay. Whenever this function gets called, 
this is where it gets set right here. And that's pretty much a lot of it. Okay, we got upgrade button. If upgrade dot has enough, blah, blah, blah. And then we close the panel. That's pretty easy. That's just call, checking the value, you know. Hey, we got enough. If we do, then do this. But it'll always close the panel. That doesn't make sense. Because if we do, don't have enough, it's just going to close the panel. We should probably have a message somewhere in there. Yeah, that probably sounds more like it. Have a message or something. This will probably change. Then we got their sell button. Pretty easy. And this is pretty much all explained. This is how we get our upgrade button. We have our start. Do we? Yep. Our update is called from here. Yep. All right. Is taken. Hey, if it contains the key, return true. False. That's pretty much it. I mean, this script is pretty much done. I mean, there's nothing really complex in here. This public data object, this is for a button to uh, unlock an upgrade. Which is part of the research, I think. Okay, let's let's take a look at this. I've got a few comments and stuff. Actually, let's not go to this directly right now. Because this is still kind of in a testing phase. Yeah, so you're not going to probably going to want these yet okay so if you had these and everything you could write these down but just you know cross them out like that until I work out some magic there we got a raycast hit <laughs> and a lot of these all these variables are owned by this class so these classes when it comes to the upgrade stuff they're not going to this is the only thing public I think and a few others but most of these functions are all privately owned and they must be static if you're starting to write this and everything else and you're wondering why you get like an error message like something like okay like this you're like oh this function actually exists you know this function actually exists because this is static think of it as like another layer okay this is like a different type of thing okay statics respond to other statics okay they don't respond to stuff that isn't static like if I go to this ray it'll trash it even though it's a member variable and it exists it doesn't have access to this and starts giving you all these errors because it's not static and you can only have one of these identified like this raycast hit and hit this cannot be duplicated whatsoever it will give you an error because it responds only to a singleton like design okay and we'll go down the receiver and fix it and notice I don't put this public I don't need this to be public public like this I don't need this to be public it's owned by the class and only works with this, it doesn't need to be called in other scripts. So we're just going to have static alone by itself. Okay. OK, 
because I'm probably going to go over the buttons like this upgrade content and upgrade stuff. I'm going to go over this in its own video. I think it, it deserves its own video for that, right? Because, well, that's just the way I'm going to do it. Because it could get overly complicated very easy. I had another system in place, but then I started recording like the video for it, and it was incredibly too complex to explain. I ended up having like an hour long video for one thing, and it was stupidly, stupidly done. I didn't like it. So I dumbed it down a, a lot just for some, just easier to work with, less variables, and it runs just as well. The old system that I had in place was completely procedural, dealing with asset bundles and everything else. So I was like, oop, no, nope, no, nope, I don't like it. So that's pretty much it for all of it. Very easy to work with. You're just using a variable, do a hit dot transform, you know. And the reason why I do these this build mode layer, this will always be in this layer, okay? If it's in ground or something else, it won't execute because it'll go, hey, it's not in the build layer. So it'll completely ignore everything like this and just go on with the program's lifespan. If I... And another reason why I went with this is because this class is static, I can't see this stuff in the inspectors whatsoever. This is not inspector friendly whatsoever. It, it's only code based, which in, in reality, it doesn't need to be anything more than that. I mean, really. And because it's designed this way, I never have to worry about silly stuff like making sure this script is instantiated and finding the object. In it. No, I can just call it directly. Just like we do with Vector3, we can go Vector3. Like, here, here's an example, okay? Take this spot right here. Notice how we can go game object. Go equals new game object. Well, in turn, this is a, a, a script, okay? This is a script, no, really different from what we're doing now, okay? Let's pull in memory, it does that. And then we do stuff like go dot add components, collider. You know, and it's it's just the way it is, okay. Now notice. Also, notice how we can go vector three temp equals vector three dot zero. Well, in turn. This is some static function somewhere around there, okay? Because we're not instantiating new memory. This is just a temporary variable. This, I can, I can run this line right here in update, and it will not have any impact on your program whatsoever. The update itself running all the time will have more of an impact than this line right here. Okay, and it's designed that way. So in turn, we're taking this, these data classes right here, and making them into something that's permanently there all the time. That's a lot easier than a regular mono behavior, like this one. Okay, this is a regular mono behavior. 
and we got all these scripts in here and yada yada yada. No, no. Okay? Because this is instantiated, it has to be garbage collected somewhere. Okay? Somewhere there's going to be garbage collection. And in turn, I think we should just do something better. Upper game. But, uh, yeah. Now, we have everything going here. We shouldn't have any errors. So, with this in mind and everything, I think, guys, I should end the video because I got other stuff to do, like school and all that great stuff. But yeah, if you like the video and things, please like, hit, subscribe because it helps the channel grow. And, well, you know, it, it shows your support. Because I'm probably going to uh, not do any updates for this for a while. Uh, probably about a week or so see what the views are like and everything else if people are interested in this I'll probably go back to FPS tutorials because I have a huge refactor that I did for our FPS kit and stuff for the videos I've already got like five videos already established for it okay with all kinds of stuff so if you guys are more interested in the FPS stuff or this please let me know by comments and likes and stuff because it lets me know what kind of content we should be looking at or you know I hang hang back a little bit on this and start with the I don't remember this being brown well I'll start with the videos on how to make this from a third, a 3D modeled one to uh, a 2D version of the game. But you know that has its its own hurdles. Let's say hurdles as in like we gotta go from game objects like this to sprites. So that should be interesting. I already got an idea on how to run it anyway, but, you know, that's just the way it is. But, uh, thanks guys, and peace out, and take care. But, uh, keep on coding, and keep on trying. And, you know, if you make some mistakes and get stuff broken, try to fix it. It'll make you a better programmer in the end. But, uh, Thanks guys for your time and thanks for watching. Wardon over and out.